Hi, everybody. This is A Wee Bit of Alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Yes, you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to go back to the um, foundation exercises the, from the uh, Dallas Society, uh, Master Moy's uh, foundation exercises, the uh, Dallas Tai Chi Society. And uh, we did them a few months ago. And I'd like to go back to them and look at them from the perspective of a lot of the stuff we've been covering in the, in the past few months sort of take them a little bit deeper. So uh, before we do that, uh, just uh, a, a word that over the next uh, week or so, the things could get a little interesting in planet uh, America. And uh, just as a, a note for how to handle the some perhaps chaotic energy that'll be gen being generated uh, in, the, in, in the world around us. And the, my advice on this whole thing is to be able to allow the energy to move through you, not to be a target for the energy or a stopping point, but to let it move through. And we do that with a lot of the stuff we've been playing with, which is that of actually grounding your energy through the balls of your feet and allows the energy to move out through the, the bubbling well and to actually move through you and allows the also counterbalance with the earth chi coming up and mixing with you. And that has a very yin supportive quality to it. So it has a tendency to calm your shit down. So um, it's a, uh, a good thing to have. And uh, so whenever you find yourself getting um, wired up, get coherent, point your index fingers, feel into that. And get your three pillars in. Feel the feel the ground. Feel the earth. Allow that energy, the earth chi, to come up through and and ground out the uh, the excess yang chi coming down. So that's uh, um, my tip on that. So uh, tonight we want to do these return to the foundation exercises. And this is a cool set that Nora turned me on to. Um, last spring, and uh, I found them very helpful. Um, and uh, I'd like to take another look at them and infuse them with some of the stuff that we've been playing with. So uh, I want you to stand up and we'll get right after it. So, so begin by Getting your three pillars in. That is, you want to feel the balls of your feet. You want to set your knees. Knees are unlocked, but soft. Your weight is centered so that it's spread throughout the whole foot, both feet, but the bullseye is the ball of the foot. So you're orienting to that. So you're feeling that profound connection with the earth through that. The crown point, the knee wand point is reaching upward and tucking your chin. So you're feeling the, an opening at the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull. Sung Kwa, that is you're going to release at the hip joints, so you're spiraling down and just ah, allow that to settle down. So you're not pushing away from the earth. You're, resi you're releasing down and settling in. You're feeling your index fingers. It's not a, a real stiff thing. It's just a nice relaxed kind of feeling. And you reach out a little bit with your elbows. Get your elbow gin in. So the arms aren't collapsed, they're, they're relaxed, but they're also have a shape. They're slightly rounded. You're, you're reaching out a little bit with the elbows. 
So just take a moment and feel into that. Oh, and you want to also release your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. You're not forcing it down. You're just ah, just letting it letting it settle as if you're kind of sitting down into into your stance. And then go back and adjust. Make sure you're still feeling the weight over the balls of the feet. When I say that, I don't mean all of the feet or all of the all the weight on the balls. I mean it spread throughout the feet, but you're you're directing it through the balls. So the first of these exercises, you bring your arms out in front, palms facing you, and you set your elbows. Point your index fingers and you rotate your forearms. Do it nice and slow and reach with your thumbs like you're, you're working a lid on a can or something like that. And then when you go back the other way, you reach with the, the little fingers. And turn. And you want to feel into that. Notice how my elbows aren't moving. All that action is happening at my forearms. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see what that looks like. Notice that my forearms are at about a 45 degree angle. You can do it other ways, but this is, I think, the, the way that is gets the cleanest flow of energy. So notice the immediate charge up you get just by rotating your forearms very consciously. This is not a matter of doing a whole lot of reps. It's a matter of very deliberately, mindfully making this motion. Breathe deeply into your, into your lower abdomen. Feel your, you know, breathe into the nose. And allow your breath to come down. Bring it down, all the way down to your hui yin at the perineum. And bring your hands down. And go back to the neutral posture. And just feel the chi flow in your hands now. Feel the tingling, pulsing, sense of fullness, increased circulation. And just recognize how much chi you're able to generate with that, that very short time. We're allowing this, taking a moment to allow this to circulate. Yeah, so the next one. Is, um, oh yeah, we reach out with your right hand. Your left hand, that, so as your left hand comes up the center line, your right hand presses down and you turn your body, you spiral down into that right quad as you reach out with your left hand, your right hand reaches down. And uh, your right hand comes up the center line and your left hand reaches down. And your left hand comes up and reaches out. And your right hand comes up and feel that left hand pressing down as you reach out. So you're, you're getting both hands involved. So there's a, a 
reciprocity happening between the two hands. So you can feel that the, there's a, as one hand moves in a yin way, the other hand is moving in a yang way. Very conscious, very deliberate. You want to bring your awareness to feel both hands. Here, the right hand is coming up to the center, up the center line, up to the chest. And then it reaches straight out and opens. And now the left hand comes up and it reaches straight out. Good. And turning to the side here, notice my feet are parallel. So coming up, right hand comes up. I'm spiraling down to the left. Left hand comes up, spiraling down to the right. So we're coordinating the qua, shifting our substantiality from leg to leg, coordinating that with a turn. The turn is directed by the yao. So the lower back is reaching as you reach out. So this is where we're getting our, our, our power is that whole body energetic connection. Hands come down and go back to that neutral spot. Feel that. Okay, now, feet still about a hip width apart. You bend your knees, sink down, palms up, and you carry. Rotate the forearms and press down. Carry. Now, as you rotate, you set those elbows and rotate the forearms. As you're coming down, lead with the elbows, then the wrists. Carry. Feel the resistance of the space you're moving through. Rotate, feel those elbows, elbows lead. You can stop anywhere along the way and just feel into that posture. Feel that each, each um, stage of it, each point that you're moving through has its own energy. Just pause a moment, just feel that there is a distinct feeling to this movement this place right here, you get down a little farther and, oh, that's a little different. I don't have names for those differences, but I can feel a difference there. Sink and carry, rotate. Oh, 
rotate and press down. Feel the resistance of the space you're moving through. It's like you're swimming through the air. Do a few sideways so you can see that. So as you're carrying, rotate. And just get the feeling of that. You really just feel into that rotation there. That's it's not not nothing. Elbows, wrists, sink. Feel the resistance of the space and carry deep breath rotate and exhale as you come down inhale and exhale Get back to the neutral place. So we're familiarizing ourselves with this state of fullness, but also circulation. So see the two fundamental principles of, of health and healing in, in the Chinese methodology is, is lots of qi and circulate it well. So we're doing both right now. Lots of chi and circulating it well. You can't store this, but you can, but you can remember how to get there. The chi is going to come, it's going to go, but you can create new pathways for it. You can allow yourself to become more familiar with that state of vibrant vitality. Okay, bring your right foot forward. And feel the ball of your left foot, set your left knee and Spiral down to the to the left and bring your hands down. And just feel into that. Feel the feel yourself being supported by your left leg primarily. You still have some weight in your in your right leg, but most it, your right left leg is a substantial one. Turn back to center. Feel the ball of your right foot. Push your right knee out and bring your hands out about halfway and feel the ball of the left foot set the left knee and turn barrel down to the left turn feel your elbows reach with the elbows set the knee and push Spiral down to the left. And as you're doing this, you feel the ball set the knee. And as you spiral down, you're taking your hands and you're pulling down. So you're feeling the resistance of the space as you're pulling down. When you're here, left hand, right hand on top, left hand pressing down. And you can do it palm up, but right now just do it with the with the both palms down notice the verticality of my spine separate elbows right mm. right ball set the right knee and push
Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down, pulling down, turning. So the pull is coming from my feet. There's a, con a continuity of energy as I do that. Separate and push. One more. Separate. Feel into that and sink into the right and push. Good. Step back with your right foot. Step forward with your left. And feel the ball of your right foot. Set your right knee, spiral down to the right. You're pulling down. Elbows. You can see it better this way. So boom. It's not collapsed. It's the elbows are relaxed, but they're they have a shape to them. Right? Spiral down, turn, and push. Notice I'm, in this one, I'm not going out very far. We'll get a chance to, to push it a little bit more in the next one. But so then you're coming down, spiral down. Elbows, pulling. Turn. Elbows, left ball, knee, and ah, reach. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, pull down. Turn left ball, set the left knee and push. Inhale as you reach out. Exhale as you come down. Inhale and exhale. Good. Notice how my butt doesn't go back past my foot. So I, I have this support. If I go back any farther, I lose it. I want to have that. I want to have it firmly rooted down through the ball of my uh, my right foot here as I'm in my back foot. On my front foot, I want to feel it through the ball of my left foot. So it's a very stable posture, physically and energetically. But there's a, even in that stability, there's a lot of internal motion. Okay, so next we're going to get a little longer. So this time you got to take a longer step. So a longer stance. Before we're here like this, now we're going to get a, a bit longer. Then we're going to do some reaching this time. Okay. Same idea with this. We're reaching, but we're re going to reach out a little farther. Last time we're going to here, this time we're going to really open up. Okay. You're going to feel the lengthening of the spine as we do that too. So as we're coming down, we feel the ball set the knee, we're pulling down. Turn, ball, knee, well, and reach. Straighten your back knee as you reach out. We'll really get long. And left ball, set the left knee, spiral down, pull down. Turn. Right ball, set the right knee and reach. Left ball, set the left knee, pull down. Feel that connection through the quad all the way down. Turn and reach. 
pull down. Go to the left leg down. Nice long stance. Use your judgment about how long it's going to be for you. But we're coming down, right ball, set the right knee and pulling down. And feel that press down, feel your elbows, feel that the tensegrity of, of, the, of the posture. Turn. Left ball, set the left knee, turn, elbows, and reach. Pull down, exhale, reach out, inhale. Exhale. So you're setting, notice how everything is all set up before the arms come out. So now there's no point here where this doesn't have chin or internal power. Every step along the way, Ah, there's a connection. Same thing coming back. If I'm pulling down from this, there's no point here where I don't have that internal power. Why? Because I'm pulling not with my hands, not with my shoulders. I'm reaching with my elbows. And the energy is coming through the body from the foot, knee, quad, spine, Shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers. Yeah. And hands come down, pivot, and back to center. And feel. Feel the chi. Release down, you get very sung. Feel, feel that relaxed tensile strength of your body. Good. Okay, now set your elbows and bring your hands at your, uh, the height of your dantian, your fingers at the height of your dantian. Elbows are rounded, shoulders are relaxed. Feel the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown point of your head. Open the jade pillow gate. Breathe deeply all the way down to your hui yin. Lift gently on, on your perineum as you, as you inhale and relax as you exhale. So here we, we're making this energetic connection with the earth. We've been doing it all along, but now we get a chance to really plug in and feel the fruits of our labors. When we take, uh, we stop the movements for a moment, we and just plug in like this, we can feel the motion and stillness. All that activity that's happening inside your body, all that action that's happening 
where your body is plugged into the big chi of the earth and the heavens. And you're participating in this, but you're doing it through stillness. All the while your body is making corrections at a very deep level. It's letting go of things you don't need, healing stuff that needs healed. Chi is circulating and, and reaching into parts of your body that maybe don't get their fair share. And bring your hands up to chest height. Keep your elbows set so that you're you're reaching out with the elbows, arms are rounded. Check your three pillars again, make sure you're feeling that. Everything's very relaxed, your wrists are relaxed. But they have shape, you're not, it's, it's not a wet, wet noodle. There is a form there that you're filling. So like a, uh, the flexibility of a garden hose. You, when you empty out the garden hose, it's, it just sort of sits around and hangs. But whenever you fill it with water, it takes on, it gets animated, it takes on a shape. There's a, a fullness there that fills it up like filling up a balloon. down, sink. Back to the neutral posture. Feel into the wholeness. Coherence. Good. Bow down to the left, step in. Deep breath. And as you exhale, discard the chi. Clear, allow the energy to move through. Dissolve into the stillness, the emptiness. Let your mind dissolve. Let your chi dissolve. Let your body become a cloud of mist. Great, grab a seat. Uh. 
How'd that go? I'm going to pick you up. Good, 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 good. Any thoughts, questions? Right. Uh, <laughs> that's quite a workout. <laughs> good. Hopefully Very you, much so. In a good way. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. Good. Nora. <laughs> So um, building on last week when we were talking about metal yeah. and the idea about going to some place, one of the ways, there are a lot of variations that we use, we do those, um, I guess the, the ones where the one foot forward and one's back and the turn, uh, it's a tour, we call it toru. Um, there are a couple of different ways that we can do it. And one of the ways that we were practicing it was where you drop your hands and it they never talked about it in the context of metal, but it really reminded me of that, of what you're talking about, Boom, right to that spot, just let them drop. So that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that was really helped, that really brought a lot of um, insight for me from last week. Good. Thank you for sharing that, that's great. Good, Joyce, did you have something? No, okay, cool. Richard. Um, I'm finding that there's, um, an interesting state, and I can I'm only can only talk about my arms at the moment, but I'm finding a place where my arms have substance but no weight. Um, so I don't know how else to explain it than that, but um, it's almost like um, I feel my arms but they don't have any weight or resistance. I understand. But they, but they, but they have substance. Yes. And I'm, and I'm seeking that in all the movements that I'm doing. Nice. Yeah, my way of, of describing that would be to say that there is a point there where you start to identify more with the energy than with the physicality. And uh, may only be... Uh, a momentary thing, but there are points where we can do that. So that what you're describing there sounds to me a lot like that. And that's, uh, you know, uh, th that's a worthwhile project to undertake to, uh, to get that so that there's just, because it's very responsive to intention whenever you have that, uh, you have that feeling. Oh, Lynn. So first, I love what um, Richard and you just said because that describes what I was feeling, and Rick seems or Nick seems to resonate with it too. Whoever I'm with, um, <laughs> um, and uh, and I want to say that this stuff is pretty miraculous since I literally just left a faculty meeting and yet could feel these uh, this insubstantiality. Uh, Substantial, though. Substantial insubstantiality. Um, but I, did, I also had a, like a technical question, and yes. that that was on when we were doing the shorter stance on the bringing the hands down mm -hmm. and then yeah. pushing, right? Um, I didn't feel like I needed to reset my back knee at all. I felt like it stayed set. Like so, you know, because you said you know, set your knee and then move and then set your knee and then move. Um, and when I, you know, the front one kind of, yes, a little bit to re reestablish that connection, but the back connection really seemed to just be there. Um, and I guess I just wanted to know um, whether I, that's indicative of a good thing or if that's indicative that I was maybe leaving too much something back there. Well, uh... It's, it's a, <laughs> not a good or a bad thing. I just want to say that what uh, the idea of setting the knee is that you are consciously bringing awareness to it. So if it's already happening, then it can either mean that it's pre-conscious, which means that you haven't been, you're not mindful, or it can be super conscious where, yeah, I got this. And it's where it depending on, on your state. So that's why I, I hedge on the good or bad thing. Cause you, 
I know whatever I say, I'm playing push hands. I am not thinking, now I must set my yeah, knee. Yeah, right, 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 right. Sure, sure. Because I'm in a super conscious state and it just, I got it. You know, I got this. But whenever I'm slowing it way down, I do want to set my knee just to the more I can, more mindfulness I can bring to that action, the more I don't need that whenever I'm in a super conscious state because I've established more neural pathways to that, that, you know, moves mm. together, wire together. So you got that, you got that thing on a, on a physical level. And then you have the a, a grooved in energy pattern, which then you, you, it's there immediately responsive to you. So that's, so that's the, uh, that's the thought I have there. Cool. Next Thank you. So, so cl just to clarify for me, cause I think I was being an idiot for a long time, but, uh, and you just said something that I, I, I haven't heard before in a way, or in a way I haven't heard before. The idea of setting the knee for me for the longest time, I kept feeling like I needed to do something. And then finally I realized it wasn't, it was just that notion of being aware of it, putting it and, and stabilizing its essence or whatever. I don't know exactly how to put it, but it's, but it is, isn't a physical doing or locking or tightening or placing it in a certain place and doing a certain thing with it so much as it is an awareness of where and what it is. And it's connection. And it's connection through, yeah. Yeah. And I would say maybe. Yeah, okay. Right. I know. It's, yes. uh, yeah, yeah. So so there is a physical component, right? But so there's if 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 say if I have a long stance, right? I you know, I I'm going my back my back knee, I definitely need to set it, right? Because there's there's something happening. I'm here like this and I'm coming here, I'm going to Oh, I'm going to release. I'm going to feel the ball of my foot set my knee. And I'm going to release here, and I'm coming down. So I definitely want to have this this baby set. I want to. I'm pivoting from this. So right. If there's any kind of load coming in, let's say we're putting this in a push hands context. If I'm just doing this like da 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 like that, and I'm not really setting it, then automatically I go up into my hip joint. So I don't know if you're doing that or not. Now I'd have to see what you're doing to be able to make a judgment on that. But the easiest way to, uh, to, to check it is to have someone, someone pushing on you as you're doing that, as you're, as you're going like that. Is, is, is it that what's happening? Or is it setting the knee and, and so that there's a definite movement with the quad? So right. this is, uh, I think to me, this is key. This is I'm coming from a, uh, you know, from a perspective of, of Tai Chi as a martial art, right? And where the uh, the stakes are a little higher. There's a little more, a uh, little more going on there than than if I'm just kind of going through it. So, uh, so I would say maybe, but uh, test test it out. Richard, you have something? Um, yeah, I'm. Um, there's a little. Uh, all right, got my. Here's what got my attention. Okay. Uh, I'm now I'm now very accustomed to setting my knee, spiraling to the right or left, and turning to the left or right. Yes. In this exercise, it was distracting to me that we set our knee, and then I'm, what I'm thinking is that after you set your knee, it's not really set until you spiral one way or the other. Right. And but I, there's I, no. Being spiraling down, and then the turn comes when you're going back to back to center. Right, but in this case, there was no turn after the spiral down to the right. I, um, I think there was. Well, I think, I, I think there was too, but we didn't say it. Okay, I, I think we're, we're you're coming down. You're spiraling down like this, right? And yeah. then I, you turn back to center. Okay. Okay, and, and then boom. So. That, that to me is what the, uh, but you're right. I, I, I was not as uh, detailed in my qua, my ball knee quas as I usually am. So okay. I, I did, I did feel after the spiral to the outside, the turn back to the ends to the middle. So that, 
that does it for me. It was just no, it was just, I thought that, ne never mind, I've got it now. But you can, you can do even more. You can, there can be more spirals and turns in there. Okay. Depends on what you need, you know, okay. for, see, I've tried mm. to simplify the exercise, but you're, I think you're absolutely right that you can add, you can have more focus on the spiral and turn. Okay. And so, it's, so there is, there is actually always a spiral and turn of some kind or another. Yeah. I, I like that. I like to do it that way. To okay. me, that, that's, that's the way to get it rock solid. Who did you okay. say was good? Thank you. Scott. So, um, uh, just so I'm remembering right, when, um, when you had it, when we were doing the carry. Yes. You would, right. So we were, we were going, we were kind of going opposition. We were going the same way, right? We were going yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. We were going, but you said we, but. As you're coming up, you're, you're rising as you're going, as you're pressing down, you're sinking. Right. But I think you had also taught us at one point that you can do it either way. You can. Okay, because I kind of I kind of let my body do whichever one it wants to in the morning, and that's fine. That's okay. fine. So I, I I like that you can you can you can monkey around with it and uh, you can reverse that, which is I think is is true. You'll get a different energy by having those poles in opposition too, and and I love that too. So yes, definitely okay. definitely want to try that. Yeah. Okay, and then the. Um, I don't. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm remembering two different exercises. But the one where we're going out, you know, out with one hand and up with the other. You had at one point. Maybe it's not the same exercise. You had had us cupping one hand. You know, cupping this hand up, and you were saying this was bringing the energy in, and this was mixing the energy. Kind of. Was that a different exercise that we were doing? It was actually more, more like this. At the, uh, if you go back to the earlier video, it's. Uh, and we, I didn't talk about it today, but it's as I'm bringing the hand up, I'm gathering the, the water chi from, 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 from down here, bringing it up to the heart, which is fire chi, and then reaching out with, with, with that, right? So, so it's water to fire, reach, and then it comes down and back to water again. So this one, so we're, this is coming out and that's that's water to fire. And this is water to fire, boom. So we're, so we're, we're keeping that, it's like a turbine. Yeah. Keeps going, uh, uh, circulating around like that. Is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, I guess I, I guess I just had the move, move confused because I thought it was more of a, more of a circle. I, it's uh, sort of a circle, but I think I, I don't know. Maybe, uh, and maybe I maybe I, I taught it that way at one point too. I, I, it's a it's a versatile exercise, so you can you can you can play around with it. So, um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, Valerie. When we um, got to the the last exercise, okay, the lifting and then the you know pushing down. Well, wasn't that the last one? Okay. Well, that one kind of started it, but it was more pronounced for me, my experience in the last exercise that we did. Um, and I started focusing on the sensation because I was just trying to figure out what's going on. I had a lot of that, that substance <clears throat> yet uh, lightness in the upper body. You know, I mean, it was substantial, definitely substantial. But from my feet up to just about my waist, and I, this is what I was examining. It, you know, was this just um, muscular tension, right? You know that that um, you know how muscles get really tired and they just kind of shake. Okay, it wasn't that. I felt like I had bees. <laughs> I had <laughs> bees from my feet coming up to the waist. And then it just, that kind of just melted away in the upper body. It was a very different sensation. I almost felt like I could do this if I let it, you know, full on, you know, I would be bouncing if I just <laughs> let that go. Um, so, and like I said, it didn't, to me, it didn't feel like it was muscle that was jumping. It was like this bee, but inside. It was just 
different. Just different. Cool. <laughs> Bartender, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, I, I, I can. I would only suggest that it's it's you know, it's an energy thing, that it's it's working its way and it's it's opening up pathways that maybe were dormant before. Okay, and that's so good. Celebrate the opening. The, uh, Cause cool stuff. Yay! Go bees. <laughs> uh, Dennis. Yeah, this time around, I was able to find more of the the opposite poles. So I was able to work with them more, and nice. it seemed like I was able to. It felt it felt like the boundary between me and the skin, the boundary between my body and the universe, seemed to disappear more. My arms just seemed to become, it, it just melted away. Nice. nice. And it was like, even like with the punching, this time more, like when I, when I slowed down the punching, it's just like, like my arms were disappearing. And it worked with doing the opposite poles. When I found the one back, one forward, one back, it just, I don't know, it was amazing. That's great. That's great. It's good to hear. So, yes, that's, that's, that's what we're looking for. But, cool. <laughs> great. Good. Did you want to do the uh, directionality or anything? Uh, we got we only have a few minutes. We only have a few minutes, so I, I don't know when to get into get into that. Uh, just say, uh, see if there any other any other questions here. Uh, questions, comments. Um, anybody else? Nora. I have an unrelated question, okay. it's, but kind of related. Um, so the um, the lower back. I'm um, in Tai Chi. Is the idea to flatten the curve in the lower back or accentuate it or just let it be natural? Release any extraneous tension there. And to, you wanna, if there's a pronounced curve there, you want to just drop. And it helps if, you're, if, you're, if your knees are locked, it, there's a tendency to to get more of a curve, more of a lordosis in the back, right? If, you're, if your knees are unlocked and you ha, release, the, release the, uh, the, the lower back, then it, it tends to flatten out a bit. So the answer is yes, um, that's the, uh, that is the direction you wanna move in, in removing any extraneous back tension so that you're allowing the spine to get straighter and uh, then it allows for the energy to move more freely. Hmm. So, yes. But not to force it to straighten. Maria says, and but not to force it to straighten. Right. So that's, that's, that's very, so uh, to, to, for an example, the, uh, some people teach tuck and suck, you know, which is to drop down, push your, your butt down so that you're flattening out the back and you're, you're mm -hmm. sucking this up. And that's too forceful. You wanna just uh, release rather than tuck. So I think that uh, uh, if you think of it in those terms, you'll, you'll, get, uh, you'll get in the right direction. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Valerie. Um, not a question, just uh, remarking on how much I am loving doing the elbow, really focusing on the elbow, you know, focusing there, holding it in position and letting that form. I mean, my form is definitely much slower um, because I really get into feeling that turn in the forearms. It's, it's quite lovely. So thank you. You're welcome. I, I, I'm very excited about elbows, as, as you may have known. So the uh, <laughs> elbows. So if you haven't read the blogs I wrote on it, just go to my website and punch in elbow. And, and, uh, and I think there's a three-part series in there on elbow gin that uh, 
that really gets into it, gets down and down and dirty on 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 Jojen and uh, and really how it is the key to really higher level stuff. That without it, you you never you're not really getting lift off. You're not getting escape velocity without the without the elbow gin. So um, it it takes you it takes you to a whole new level. Yes, Valerie. Um, well, working that with really focusing on the yao, you know, and there are certain places in the form where you know I can really focus on the elbow separately, and then the movement comes from the yao, and sometimes they're together, right? This is rotating, and the yao is moving. That's very exciting. Wonderful, wonderful. Because Valerie, for people who don't know, has been doing Tai Chi now for what? Uh, long time. 42, 42 <laughs> years? 42 years. OK, so we got it about the same time. So uh, yeah, it's uh, 42 years. So uh, it's so cool to find new stuff with anything you've been doing for that long, right? You're not just, you know, punching the clock and, and, and getting through your form. You're actually discovering every time you step up to the line. So how cool is that, right? It's like it's the gift that keeps on giving. You're, uh, there's this endless opportunity for discovery, which um, uh, I find totally fascinating. That no matter how deep you go, is oh yeah, it's layers of the onion, Russian dolls. <laughs> you just keep whoop, more more there. There's another one in there, <laughs> and you just keep peeling it off. So yeah, more more fun. Yes. We need to announce that there's no class next week. Okay, Maria says there's no class next week. We're taking the week off. We're taking the week off. I'll probably be drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Well deserved. Uh, we'll start up again the following week on a Tuesday. So I'm going to create a new link for Tuesday. And uh, I'll make sure that uh, I'm going to put it on Facebook and in the newsletter. But uh, if any of you don't do Facebook or the newsletter, uh, let me know. I'll send you the link in the email. And for those of you who know Maria and, and, and drinking, it's uh, a teaspoon of, of whiskey in her tea is uh, <laughs> is her idea of drinking. So <laughs> well, I, hope but, I, hope it's, I hope it's drinking and celebration. <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but the uh, uh, so yeah, so we'll uh, we'll take a week off, and then we're going to be shifting to Tuesday night coming up uh, in uh, in November. So uh, same time, same time. Is it same time, eight o'clock? Yeah. Lynn. Just want to say um, that this has been wonderful and we really appreciate it. Uh, we probably won't be able to come on Tuesdays because oh, we'll be teaching our own class. Teach Tuesday night. Oh, okay. um, but uh, if it get right now we're teaching outside. So when it gets too cold, we'll be back. We'll be back. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Great. Okay. Yeah. Love you all.